Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, Woo. it done got all <laughs> legendary uh -huh. and extremely black, excellent, and sexy in here. Yeah, yeah man, we got the sexiest ones right now, ladies Woo. and gentlemen. Yes. Big Boy. Yeah, okay, now it's Michael That's B. Jordan hey. and Jamie Foxx. Hey. No, welcome to the neighborhood, fellas. How y'all doing, man? Man, I'm fantastic. How you doing? I'm doing amazing, man. Are you good on volume, Jamie? You I show, show it and, and, and just follow your cord down. That's cliche. Yeah, turn, turn my head headphones up. up. Yo, turn, turn my hair. Hey, man, it's first off, I got to say, man, uh, welcome to the neighborhood, of course. Thank you. But the body of work yes. wow. that I had a chance to witness, man, wow. with Just Mercy mm -hmm. wow. is amazing. Thank you, man. And I'm talking about, bro, not just the emotional roller coaster of of just mercy but the importance of a movie like that even a time period though mm. when i kept checking the time period to really look and say man i'm not watching something from the 60s where you would think even then it was crazy yep. but you wouldn't think that you would see something in you know the late 80s and early 90s that look like what this movie just mercy is and it's a true story mm -hmm. i gotta ask you michael b jordan what brought you to the actual script why 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 was this movie why did it feel like it had to be made i, I think it happened in um it happened in uh in sections you know mm -hmm. when i first got introduced to the project i didn't know that much about brian stevenson right and i was embarrassed about it when i when i got a chance to look at listen to his ted talk hear him speak um I was shocked that he wasn't a household name. You know, mm -hmm. this guy, uh, you know, he dedicated 30 years of his life to, to criminal, criminal justice reform, you know? And, uh, and, and, and so when I got a chance to get to know him, hear him speak, understand this man for who he was, I was like, man, I gotta get this, this man, his story on the biggest stage How long possible. ago was that? About four years ago. About four, About four years, years ago. ago. So we, we took our time really developing. So it wasn't already laying somewhere and they hit you up to like be a part of it or? No, it was one of those things where he, uh, Just Mercy, the book, his memoir, mm -hmm. you know, he had wrote and um, that he didn't even really want to write at first. You know, he didn't really, he doesn't want a lot of attention. He's humble. Right. He's the kind of guy, that wanna, he wants to be behind closed doors. He wants to get the work done without a lot of attention. But then he realized the narrative has to change. You know, mm -hmm. through narrative, through storytelling, through the arts, he felt like we can do that with a movie like this. So I got the chance to read the book first, got a chance to get to know him over some time. And I think he was auditioning me at, you know, yeah. for, <laughs> to see if I was like the right person to actually like, like play him. Like, hmm, I don't know. I, don't about you. I, I, I think he was happy that you were playing. Him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the, Michael B. Jordan playing, you. Uh, but it was it was a uh, it, it was nervous for me because he's such yeah. a great guy. Yeah. I didn't right. want to mess it up. You know? Right, he, he, right. He's like a nobody's perfect, but he's close. And, and especially mm. such so a smart. story to be told. Yeah. You exactly. know, and so you got to be careful how it's presented. Mm -hmm. how it's delivered to mm -hmm. the world. Exactly. And when you said also that at one point when you first started hearing, you were embarrassed by it because of our, you know, either us not knowing the naivete or whatever, but now you, you get a chance to introduce this man or these stories mm -hmm. to the world. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And so, so with, and Jamie, I mean, bro, you, 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 uh, like I know Jamie, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we we know see Jamie, we know like, and, and, and not just real. like know like this. But when I when I see you get into character, you don't see Jamie Fox. Nope. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you don't see like, oh man, that's Jamie doing this. That's Jamie. Yeah. Like Jamie, when you go into a character, you become that character. Or we don't think about Gold Digger. We don't yeah. think about any other movie. Yeah. We just we look at what you're doing at that particular yeah. time. And the way that you really get into a character mm. is phenomenal, oh, man, bro. Thanks. What brought Jamie Foxx to Just Mercy? To be honest with you, Michael B. Jordan. Mm -hmm. And I and I commend this young man because he, 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 here's it in a nutshell. It's like we talk about all of these things where we want to be uh, involved in some type of revolution, right. especially on mm -hmm. social media. It'll happen. Sometimes it'll be a day social media. It'll be at the last 20 days. or that, And it's sort of... It dies down. It, it dies down. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we don't know where to go and what to do. The reason I commend Michael B. Jordan is because he could be anywhere doing any type of big blockbuster movie. Yeah. Now, and I say this. When he called me, I was humbled by it. The reason being is because he gives me an opportunity to get my... And we talked about some personal things. Like, uh, we don't share it. But, but, but the overall arc of it was this gives me an opportunity to get my artistic integrity intact mm -hmm. and at the same time be a part of his narrative think about what he's doing as a young age mm -hmm. what he did in fruitville station 
when this young man was in Fruitville Station, and I took people who were hardened guys and watched that and watched them yeah, weep. Man. I, yeah, man. I remember, you know, that move out here. I said, oh. Yeah. He's, he's, He's captured. And with Fruitvale also, Michael B. Jordan, that was another, if people didn't know the story, yes. that was another introduction exactly. to a story that we probably didn't exactly. know of. And think about this. So that lasts forever. We can go watch Fruitville Station at any time and really uh, uh, educate ourselves on what that mm -hmm. was. Then he goes on to Killmonger in yes. Black Panther, mm -hmm. and he was way bigger than... Then the pant, you see how big he yeah, was? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was way bigger yeah. than the what panther. What the hell you do to pull that? When I, when I see that damn Black Panther, yeah. and Photoshop when I see big. like Creed, yeah. I'm going to tell Photoshop. you, I love you as I, my brother, but, but I, hate I hate you at the same time. time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's just some the things that you just oh, know that you're not in the category of. And I'm fine with that. I'm yeah. old enough to know, hey, man. You went through a transformation, though. Yeah, but not like There's a difference between a transformation and somebody that just look way better than you. You know what I'm saying? And it's unfair did you see how he looked i you and ryan got a got a thing because even the way he shot you it looked mm. different he knows his yeah. angles yeah, yeah. He <laughs> shot, you know what i say he like. shot you with a bump up a bump camera <laughs> 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 when he came up like, and then everybody else he's like yeah all right what's up okay. all right stay right there you get the whole all right i'm not doing this on some old ass stuff like checking the gate i got a gate but he was a man. We on digital. Yeah. yeah. And then the fact that you threw the panther. Up, why you throw my man off the hill? <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. Oh, man. So those are like, that's like that's iconic work, though. It was. Like y'all part of some iconic work. Yes. But you know what was amazing was the same narrative playing the villain, and I put that in quotations. The same narrative still connected to our culture. Mm -hmm. You rooted for Killmonger because of yeah. what he was saying. So I thought that was brilliant that he was able to. Start his artistic sentence with Fruitville Station, exclamation point uh, in, 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 in Killmonger, uh, Black Panther, and now Just Mercy. Mm -hmm. I think it's the most important film I've ever been a part of. Wow. Because of what it says and to us. And I heard us. you said that. Why is that? Because of what it does for us big guys. Black folks is so, let, let's just be honest, man. We know several people in jail all the time mm -hmm. and to me it 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 saddens me because we get so used to it yeah and so this was a movie to actually take that perception and knock it down like I, i'll be the first one to tell you i don't like the even when we're doing the jail stuff i ain't like none of that i don't like going to jail right i don't like being around jail and as a matter of fact there was a moment when we were first doing our scene mm -hmm. and they had to put the cuffs on me now there was a correctional officer who was the actor then there was the real correctional officer standing next to him so the, the the actor said, how should I put the cuffs on him? He leans over to him and says, squeeze him tighter. He's a bigger one. Oh, wow. Okay, is this in the movie? Is this on the screen? No. This, this is while they're oh, shooting. This is, like this is while we're shooting. Now, the, now, it's no disrespect to the real correctional officer yeah. because he's just doing his job. Right. Yeah. But when he said, put him on tighter. As a, a matter of you fact. You felt that. He's a bigger one. Yeah. Oh. And, I, and when he squeezed, I said, man, these... Cuffs are tight enough. Right. Don't, in a sense, don't make me come out these cuffs. Right, yeah, hell yeah. But the minute that happened, then we go into the scene. So it was little things like that, that that I was like, man, this is so important. And then on top of that, my, people don't understand, my father, right? They put my father in jail for $25 worth of illegal substance yeah. for wow. seven years. Wow. This man was an educator in the hood for 25 years. The very kids that he taught and had the judge come and talk to, that very judge presided over his case. Put him in jail with the same kids he taught. Mm. Mm. Now, here's the thing. They don't understand that that father, though, taught me how to play football, taught me how to play basketball. And then one time, he's, he said, I want you to learn how to play tennis. I said, huh? What, what, that's what white people said. No, no, I don't want you to be limited. So he taught me how to play tennis in Terrell, Texas. Mm -hmm. So some of my heroes as a young black kid in Texas was Vitas Garolitis, Elena Stasi, Yannick Noah, Arthur Ashe, mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Connors, tennis greats. But I couldn't go see my father in jail because I don't do that. I said, I don't ever want to go. I don't visit nobody in jail, and my homies know that. I wrote my father one letter. I said, you get out, things are good. I'm on now. You get wow. out, I save, I save your life. So my father now lives with me. He's lived with me for the past 20 years. I heard that. But watch this. I got a chance to take that man to the U.S. Open. Oh. oh wow, how beautiful. 
and we sat there and watched Venus play. Man, that's deep. Mm -hmm. Tears running down our eyes. So I took that and placed it with Walter McMillan, the person that I play, along with Michael B. Jordan, who I have to say this, behind and in front of the camera, this young man right here, phenomenal. And we got a chance to see the fruits of his labor mm -hmm. at the Toronto Film Festival. This movie, and I kept telling him, I said, man, when people actually see this yes, film, because he's working, he's doing so mm -hmm. much, he's doing so much. I said, when you get a chance to watch the crowd and when you see how they react, when he walked out at the Toronto Film Festival, he got an eight-minute standing ovation. He did. And so that's why I say it's important because it's a universal film. Mm -hmm. It tested at a 97 in front of an all-black audience. And then when it tested in front of a white audience, it tested at a 98. Come on now. Yeah. And now it's at an A-plus cinema score. So in other words, like we promote movies a lot of time where we be like, Man, that really ain't hot. <laughs> but I'm still out there, you know I'm still out there. And you know the movie Don't ain't good. It. When they interview said, Jamie, yeah. talk about the clothes you were wearing. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, the jacket Will was... there be a stealth too? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That was too much. No, it's not. Oh, no, 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 hey, but, hey, <laughs> hey, no, bitch. Uh, you know, be, be, <laughs> you know me, bitch. I'm always, I'm almost, almost too honest when it ain't, when it ain't right. I'll be like, We're not right. asking you for I'll be trying honesty. to let people, I'll be trying to let people know, oh, this movie's great. <laughs> <laughs> wait, yeah. wait, you need help. Be like, Jamie, talk about the new movie. Let's not, yeah, man. Let's talk about not. it right now. Talk about you know the song. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you know Ed Sheeran slept on my couch, yeah, yeah, right? right. Yeah. Just Mercy, a movie that I feel everyone has to see. Mm -hmm. And you know what I love about it too? We were talking about it. it it's not the, it's not a black movie. You no. know what I'm saying? Like, like when we say that it takes it tests well in front of different audiences people really have to see this movie and the reason why man is i feel that for one it gives you more of an understanding of each other you know what i'm saying and then there's also moments where you just think like if it wasn't a true story we know oh, you know what i'm yeah. saying but if it wasn't a true story you'd be like man mm. oh look how they write this got all you know? yeah 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 that wouldn't but, happen. but it is it's a it's a very true story mm -hmm. you know and and also you gentlemen are in a position where you guys could pretty much do anything in hollywood you know but mm -hmm. there is a choice that you guys made to make sure that you did just mercy you know what i'm saying like and like mm -hmm. we said y'all could have been a part of any uh, new blockbuster or so with, with michael b jordan and i did ask why was it so important you know, and, and why did this push everything to the side and come to the front of the line? I think it's important because it, it helps change the narrative. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the perception of what it is to be brown and black has always been connected to negativity. You know, has always been connected to guilt. Mm -hmm. It's always been connected to just demonizing, like, our character and our persona. And if we could use our platform of, of art, of storytelling, one of the most powerful, um, you know, art forms to change that narrative, to to bring people closer to to us, to our community that they may may, may only see through mm -hmm. propaganda, through media and news outlets that give a certain depiction that, that shapes us a certain type of way that's evolved from slavery. If we can kind of change that narrative and kind of bring people closer to what you and I go through, our families, mm -hmm. what it humanizes. You know, we've been looked at as less than human, you right. know, like for so for so long. If our if our if my platform can do something to help change that, then then I got I got Why do you care? You know, because some people it's like, me. yeah, man. I mean, for real, sometimes you know, it's like, man, I'm gone. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not looking back. I mean, I think it's like how I was raised. It's just like certain things you can't really explain. That's just who I am, who my, who my mother and father, you know, raised me to be. You know, the the responsibility that I have of, you know, being um, uh, in the position I am of, of uh, the things that I care about, you know, trying to be a part of the change, trying to live your dash. You're only on this earth for a short amount of time. Like, how do, how do you how do you mm -hmm. build something that lasts forever is, you know, by who you put on and whose lives you change. Who Have y'all had an experience where, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. where I'm pretty sure everybody, you know, I'm, I I know I had many, you know what, what I'm saying, that? where where you've been pulled oh, over or, or there's been something oh, that's been on, crazy. Man. Yeah, you people, kidding me? Jamie people. almost was like, man, that was a stupid-ass question. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I mean, people look at us like, you know, they, you know, they think we made it, you know, because I'm who I am or whatever or, you know, who Jamie Foxx is. Let me get a free pass. Like, nah, it's even, sometimes they even go out their way to make sure that you don't yeah. feel special. Don't think yeah. you, mm. you above hey, anything. Right. We'll go the extra mile to make sure we embarrass you or... Yeah. Or put you in an uncomfortable situation. Oh. So 
coming from Newark, New Jersey, it's definitely been, you know, times getting pulled over, harassed, you know, out here in L.A., definitely, you know, it's normal. It's right. something, one of those things where yeah. you expect, and I think that's the problem, the fact that it's, we're so desensitized yeah. and it's become such the norm that we think it's okay and we tolerate so much more bullshit than, yeah. we're, yeah. than, than, than what we should, so... You know, it's a, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know it's Jamie's a, that story. Oh, man, Jamie, on, man. where do you learn how to just like, you know, like it's not like you're acting, bro. It, like because, the, the because way you big, turn no, your but, head. But big, or, big, big. Me and you know each other. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird thing. It's like when I come in here, I'm already knowing like, look, we got, we have years into this. And when you talk about these type of issues, look, man, look, I live out in, th- I live out in a, um, yeah, over there. Over uh, there yeah. at your house. <laughs> you I live a thousand location. miles away from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super far. Yo, but it, but you know it's a white neighborhood, so you know sometimes you get to live, and I start feeling like, well, sure, I'm white. So, I'm <laughs> right. I'm, so I feel. I, I woke up talking to my boy Tyron Turner from Minnesota Society. I said, well, I feel white today. Don't you feel white? I feel like, no. Why don't I jump in my? So I jumped in my Rolls Royce because I'm like, hey, I'm in. You know, a thousand miles away, I'm riding around. I feel white. I'm riding my chop the top down and everything. I'm listening to the some I don't know jazz. Or, I'm just I'm feeling really white. Right, right, right. And I'm heading down to one on one, and all of a sudden I see a a, a a cop on a motorcycle behind me. But I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. not me. Nah, I'm Jamie, Jamie Foxx. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Caucasian. Yeah, today. And then I look, and he hits the thing. And I'm, bro, I'm so like, this could not be me. I literally like move over, go, go get him. <laughs> go Chase get the bastards, whoever they are, disrupting our whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> and he said, "It's you. Pull it over." I said, "Oh, ooh, yeah." <laughs> oh, and you know the the wheel, the wheel in the old drop head is a little bigger. So right. Said, oh. oh, go ahead now. We wouldn't know that. So I pull <laughs> over. My <laughs> bad. My bad. <laughs> no, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, I pull over, and the story is this: the guy pulls me over. He's young. Mm-hmm. He's yelling at me. You see me? This and that and so on. I said, "My man." I said, "My man." What? What can we do to de-escalate this? Could you possibly think that I thought you were going to get someone else? Why are you yelling at me this mm-hmm. way? And then Tyron from Minnesota Society, who played King, that's my homie, he's looking at him like, uh-oh. So I, I, I touch his arm. I said, it ain't worth this. So I said, what can I do to de-escalate this? I said, because... I live here. Mm-hmm. I give him my thing, and he's boiling over. And it's because of the perception. And that's why these types of movies, we got we to gotta peel it back. Mm-hmm. Because I'm the age that I am understanding what this is. But think about a young kid. Think about a young kid, 18, 19, on his social media who is being bombarded with images of police brutality, of policemen shooting black men or women, he's boiling over. Now, on the other Mm -hmm. side, the policeman looking at his social media, Mm -hmm. looking at the black person, looking at him, he's boiling over. By the time they see each other, it's dynamite. But I'm older, so I'm able to figure it out. But a young, so that's why when we talk about this, it doesn't matter what setting you're in when you are black and you see a cop. My reaction is completely different right. at all times. Mm-hmm. So you immediately like, and, and that's just one story. Another story. I was in a another nice car, pull over to the gas station. The cop makes a U-turn on his bike, pulls over and parks right next to me in the gas station, staring at me. I try to speak. Hey, how you doing? Huh? He don't, he don't say nothing. I said, oh, he ain't got the box set. Mm. Jamie Foxx. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fox. Does he not know? I got to right. get out here more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't until a little Mexican he walks up and says, yo, Jamie Foxx, get a picture. And he went. Mm. And then he let off me. Mm. So it's it's sad hey, that man, that's constant. I was right here oh, across yeah. the street. They took out my car. <laughs> what? <laughs> They'll tell me you could take everything out. Oh, man. You know, and oh. they put my car on the flatbed, bro. It took my took, registration, insurance, everything, bro. Dude was just have he was just having that kind of day. Yeah, he was having wild. that kind of day. Because man. you know what it is, and what I tell young people now today, there's a thing called contempt of cop. Mm. Meaning the police officer will stop you for a tail light, but then he will mm. keep searching, trying you know, to see. It just egg you. He'll talk to you in a manner where mm-hmm. like we men. Yeah. You gotta talk yeah. to me like that. I always say like this, yo, what you need, let me get it to you. 
You ain't got to do all that. But when they do that and do that and then they egg you on, the next thing you know, you're in cuffs, you're in that. So all of these different stories that, that, that we've heard, I think when we do just mercy, it goes behind mm -hmm. what it is. It goes behind and tells you what we're sort of suffering from, these images and what they, you know, um, what they think of us. And and that's that's why I think this is the most important movie. Because I, I even used to do jokes about I used to do this joke called whew, whew, yeah. <laughs> I was doing Chicago like a a stand up comedy thing years ago and I go into this mostly white it was a big white hotel, you know, and I got my hoodie on and I'm mm. standing there and I get on the elevator and it was mostly white people on the elevator and when they s saw me walk in they they huddled to the corner, get over here. <laughs> Michelle, 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 get over here. And so they're all in the corner. And then one of the girls had enough courage to look beyond my hoodie and said, oh, it's Jamie Foxx. <laughs> and they were like, Phew. it's a joke. But that's Real. what they uh -huh. actually feel. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like I said, this movie is so important because it, it helps peel back those layers. What did it's you guys learn from each other making this film? Learn from each other. I mean, I've been watching him damn near my whole life you know and, and i think i've you know i've always he listens very well J, J, like i think acting is you know is a you know as an actor one of our most important you know what i'm saying qualities is to listen to one another inside of a scene and and, and, and jamie listens it, it's it's never a, a repeated beat because he's giving you something new because he's hearing it for the first time every time so he's giving you something different and that's something that i've always you know tried to do but it's like a muscle you got to work it out you got to continually try to try to, to work on these things so that's something that I definitely kind of picked up from Jamie and like knew like really put the the importance and value on listening inside of a scene is is working mm. with him. Jamie, okay. you you mentioned. Sorry, what did you learn from Michael? You know what, Michael B. Jordan really cares about acting. That's not normal in our business. Mm. A lot of times, you have to pick a side. You have to pick either I'm going to be the blockbuster and and sort of roll with that. And then there's people who can do both. He actually cared about the acting of it. And there's, and I hope I don't put him on the spot, but there's a scene in this movie where he does the speech in the, in the courtroom. And I watched him tackle that. And it was so important to him. And, you know, when he started it, a couple of times he fumbled a couple of words and he apologized to everybody. Mm. Apologize, apologize, apologize. And at one point I said, hey, you ain't got to apologize. You put this together. You, if it takes you 30 minutes to say one line, you do it. You do your thing. And he went off to the side, and you can see him working with it. And he comes back, and he lullabies it. Mm -hmm. To the point to where the extras that were in the courtroom scene gave him a standing ovation. And then I went to, you know, say, good job. I touched his arm. He, uh, wow. He, and he, you know, the <laughs> tear, and he walked. I said, ooh. Yeah. You, got, you know, black people say, that's the Holy Ghost. He got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like this. No, he got the, he literally had the acting Holy Ghost. And he could speak, he could speak. I would love to hear his take on what that day was. I mean, because I know from my perspective, but it was beautiful. I mean, and that's and that's another thing, is like learning from him is just kind of like just owning the moment. I think a lot of times, you know, I think growing up I've been apologetic for the circumstances that I've been in and just wanting everything to be great, you know? Mm -hmm. Not not wanting to, you know, I can't phone it in. You know what I'm saying? It's so important to kind of be on, especially when we're telling the story. And I guess, and in certain movies, you circle, you read the script and you circle certain scenes like, oh, here's the one that's really important to me. This one is really important to the project. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get to, you know, this is the day that we're going to shoot it. And this was one of those scenes <clears throat> that I really kind of wanted to get right. It was so pivotal for Walter McMillan's case in the movie. And, um, and, and as an actor, you know, you, every scene... Every moment, you you don't fully lose yourself in. You're not completely in that. You know, you you are, but you try to stay in it as long as you can. Mm -hmm. like, it's something that you really gotta gotta kind of you know. You hope to get those euphoric moments of like I'm completely lost. I'm not even like I'm Here. I'm some I'm somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that was and that was one of the that was one of the scenes for me that that I got a chance to really tap in and and it was largely to do with you know what I'm saying with Jamie. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Uh, he really he, he really helped me through those days. You know, he really helped me through like. Um, we played music, you know what I'm saying, to kind of get us in the mood of what we were shooting, what scenes we were shooting. Right. He would like, he would, you know, walk around with that speaker, you know, he's there. <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> he was set the, he was set Plug the it mood. In. How do you separate yourself from that? Because I know that when you did Black Panther as yeah. well, 
you had to did you say you had to go to therapy the to kind of pull up. yourself out of that and then jamie with with ray you know it, it i know it, it can't just be three two one action and you just oh you know and fall right out there's no blueprint to it you know i think for me i was i take every job as learning experience you know and i try to learn something from each one i try to i try to grow and i try to grow and i never knew that i had to come out of a character mm. that was the first time i was actually mm. like not feeling like myself and i was mm. like man i'm like depressed i'm super like mm. Emotional, yeah. I'm like like non-emotional rather, you know. Mm. And, um, for where I kind of had to go for like Eric Killmonger, like that that was a guy that I that I, I really kind of cut off a lot of emotions and love, you know, from a lot of people. I didn't, I was isolated for a long time before I actually started filming. Mm. And then coming out of it, I had to kind of re, I had to get used to being around family members and friends mm. and being normal and talking about regular stuff. It was like it was a whole different thing, and therapy definitely helped me. And that was, you know, I remember talking to Jamie about it. You know, what I'm saying talking to other people that you know, who've went through something similar. Cause it's hard to give advice about something that you never really right. went through. Mm -hmm. And this is something, it's a different beast, you know? So, uh, and everybody hand, handles it differently. So therapy was something that definitely helped me kind of mm -hmm. get out of that and kind of get a clean slate. When you do something like Black Panther, or when you do something like Creed, how much are you working out? Uh, Creed. You know what I'm saying? Like that's <laughs> Creed, Seems like a Creed, lot. Creed was a lot. I mean, cause I, the Creed, I had the luxury of time. Like I knew about it right when, when we started shooting Fruitvale Station, Ryan told me about Creed and I was like, okay, oh. cool. So I started for about a year and a half to live and, 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 and train like a fighter. So I kind of, I had, had enough time for the first one. The second movie, it took me about eight months, seven or eight months or so of a diet, you know, repetition. Working out, I got genetics, you know, in my face. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I would have showed up totally <laughs> different. It would have yeah. been like, you know, you're shooting this movie, right? I'm like, man. Like, yeah, but, but that right there Change is determination the as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, having a great trainer, you know, obviously, like, you know, we, we got help, you know, trainer, you know, uh, Corey Callier, my guy, he's, you know, he, he's, he's been training me since Creed 1 and, uh, we, we, you know, through Killmonger. And we try to get a different body type for each character. We don't want one guy. Yeah, you do. I don't look want to look the same. For, <laughs> same for when everything. that trailer came out, I got so many calls from dudes like, what this motherfucker doing right yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Man, why, why you got to look like that? I, said, hey, man, I don't know. And, but I, and you do hate from a distance yeah. where you're like, I just want to see him fall. fall like like yeah. tripping fall. In the or, de he I in remember the I was desert? in the airport with him one day, right? And I was like, oh, this uh, black motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I wanted to be like, hey, what's up, Michael? How you doing, brother? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I know how to disguise my hate. Yeah. Even with this interview, I turned it down twice. <laughs> I you know turned what I'm saying? Yeah. Twice. I was like, man, I was, I'm like, I'm, Jamie can come in. You know what I'm saying? Because I I, done, I stopped being yeah. jealous of Jamie long ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he, you, oh man, you, <laughs> yeah. Michael E. There's a few of y'all. Yeah. I just be like, Ugh. No, man, I'm, I'm cool with him, but him. And then he nice. Yeah, like man. the other night, and I don't catch no cases. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but the other night he was talking about something, and he was talking about you know why he does acting, and it really mean you know it's really important to me, you know. And uh, and he said something, and uh, and I seen a girl in the in the, in the audience. She's just, <laughs> you saw when you came in here. Yeah, he was like, I'm, glad we're not, I'm just glad we're not in the same age bracket. Right. You know, <laughs> the girls that think that, that like me are 65. Right? Oh, Jamie, you that. so young. Hey, bro, you better vibrant. stop that. You know I'm what I'm saying? saying? 65. And you know what I loved about Michael B. Jordan? He levitated in here. Yeah, you yeah. Know, he was he was like kind of floating. All yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, cool. dude, it's the jacket. Oh yeah, that's his on. That jacket is fine. Is there? Will you be in Black Panther too? I don't know. Lies. No, you are. Gotcha. Everybody, every, you no, 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 I swear, Mind people stop. Man. Listen, Come on, man. They, you up. would think, and I, you know, I'm almost embarrassed to say it. You would think I would know everything about it because me and Ryan are so tight. Ryan, Ryan loves you. Ryan, and he doesn't tell me shit. He really? can't make a movie without you. you. He, doesn't tell, he doesn't tell me anything. No. I, I, I hope. But he got to tell you in advance to start training, though. So this is, you this know is, what it is, bro. That's what I be telling him sometimes. You know, you've been practicing your lines already. Yeah. Something going on because he's still, he's still chippy chip on there. Yeah. He chippy chip. Something's going down on Jamie. He's no. like, are you in Black Panther too? Oh, no, why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> what would you think, though? Yeah. <laughs> Curling your backpack Curling radios. Your backpack, you, know you know what I'm saying? saying? Something going on. Right. So you don't you don't know anything about Black Panther uh, 2? Nothing about Black Panther 2. Like Marvel and Disney, they're like, you know, they're like, you know, the FBI. Them cats is Fort Knox over there. They don't, they don't say anything about anything. So they, mm. they kind of keep me out of the loop on that one. But Creed 3 will be happening. I'm not mm. sure Are y'all doing that now? Nah, oh. not right now. We're just still developing it. You know, okay. getting it together. Let so me know if you need a sparring partner. I got you. No, not me. <laughs> no, I mean, you said it like you're talking about no, yeah, no, I'm just man. saying, let me know. I know some people that oh, okay. got it. What was the uh, truth about Matrix 4? Was there any truth to that? I, you know, I've been rumored to play 
everything from the DuckTales uh, reboot <laughs> to Power Rangers to Matrix to this person. Yeah, well, let's that kill person. these rumors it's, right it's, now. It's, it's, nah, I mean, I, they're developing that too. Also, Son and of I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a part of that one. We'll kill those rumors. <laughs> no. Wait, hey, man, Matrix? No, no, no I'm, talking, I'm talking about Son of Jarrell. I don't hey, know dude, what that those. is. You know what son of Jarrell is? Who is it? The daddy Superman. Who? Oh yeah, they say Superman too. Huh? Son I'm of Jarrell. How am I gonna do all these movies? But you know what I love about that? What? Those are great movies yeah. to even it be is. rumored. No, it's great to be a part of those conversations, man. Honestly, it's a blessing to be like you know in consideration for these things, and you know. See, I did that. movies long ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they were putting me in movies like it'd be one day. And that was just so I could talk about it on air. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We just recently watched uh, when I was on Jamie Foxx show. I recorded that. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I haven't worked in Hollywood in a long time. But you, even you even when I watched Just day. Mercy, I was like, man, that could have been my hand that came out the cell that did the fist bump. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, damn, brother can't get no fist bump. <laughs> hey, man, what about uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr.? Oh. He never was face on. He only had side makeup on profile. like one side of his face every day. It was like either they shot him from the left Listen, or they shot him from the right. That was his strong side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> side. No, his angles. Nah, but, but, but angles. even everybody that was in that movie, bro, yeah. the just the the cast, everybody was perfect. I don't know, and and, and I asked you this morning, the whoever the Caucasian dude is, how he the had side. the mouth twisted and all that. Error. The witness. I don't know. Oh, oh my! About, oh, Tim Blake Nelson. Yes. Oh, Tim's amazing, amazing. man. So I, good. I got a chance to work with him a few years back in Fantastic Four. The I thought he was the real dude at first. I was like, man, they don't win. Got this. <laughs> did, yeah, but did you see the like the split screen? I mean, did you see the actual the, footage yeah. of him? Mm -hmm. He's just like him. And if you didn't know, if you didn't know that was a real person, you would think he was overacting, or you thought he was trying to like play too much of a character. But no, he was spot on. The guy. He went. So far as to get the prosthetics put on his face oh every day, gosh, it was uh, he did an amazing job in this movie. And there, go ahead, love. There were so many different layers that were touched in this movie that obviously are still going on, and I could go try to peel layer by layer. But one moment that I think really impacted me and really had me like sitting there like sobbing, and I was like, why am I still crying? Mm -hmm. Was the moment with Herbert, uh, uh, yeah, with Herbert. with mm -hmm. Herbert and mm -hmm. his story. Um, after that, does it make you change your mind or do you go into deeper thought about the death penalty and, you know, the outcome of it? I think talking to Brian day in and day out, understanding the work that he's doing, understanding. I mean, we have our opinions from the outside looking in of what the system is and right. criminal justice and how things work and how you get from a traffic stop to, to, this. to the electric chair. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so seeing what Brian sees and really understand the process he has this thing that he says that if uh um you know for every if it was a you know a batch of a basket of apples and for every um you know for one out of every 10 apples that you ate you die nobody would sell apples right you know what i'm saying you you apples would be illegal if one out of every 10 flights you take one's going to crash you, you wouldn't be able to fly planes mm -hmm. so if one in every one in every out of every 10 people on death row is innocent do we have the right is that system built are, right. do we have the right to kill Mm -hmm. to take life if that's the numbers that we're running by you know our system isn't isn't perfect you right. know and, and and how how do you how do you put value in a life that way so that's kind of been my eye-opening kind of like per, perception of what the death penalty is and yeah. and um and and figuring out where i stand on that uh so yeah yeah was it a lot more than what y'all anticipated when yeah. you go from looking at the project to when you actually become involved and it's not just acting Yes. You know what I'm saying? This is emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Well, the, to to pick it, to pick it back on what he's saying about the death penalty, you have to understand that our system is pretty much perfect. We have a perfect system when it comes to the paper, the writing of what our justice system is. It's the people mm. that manipulate the system is where it goes awry. Because you got to think about it, there are people that every single day are trying to herd us into jail. Mm, That's their job. So and here's the thing. Here's Business. the thing. Privatized jail system, mm -hmm. which is what my father went through because they came up with the conspiracy law that if somebody had uh, some type of drug paraphernalia in this room, we all get 15 with an L. They were making money off of that. You got to understand, the people that did this to Walter McMillan still kept their job. Yes. Yeah. The sheriff yeah. yeah. only yeah. 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 Read, and I'm telling you, stay all the way to the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, until like they all turn the, the lights on and they start throwing away the popcorn. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, stay all the way. So you got to understand, like, no, 
this is real. This, mm-hmm. this is not, and this is this was 1986. But look at the cases that are up right now. Yeah, yeah. man, you yep. got the case up right now. As a matter of fact, Brian Stevens is working on a case for a guy for a nine. Like I told you, nine dollar crime, nine dollars mm-hmm. is put in jail for life. So you have to understand, like, <clears throat> why I commend Michael is because this gives us an opportunity to have something that lasts forever. When I talk about being on this, it's it's sort of hard to gain traction. We, we want to get it off. We want to say I'm upset about, it, but we don't know where to go with it. <clears throat> this will give you an opportunity to go to the movies, watch it be entertained, but at the same time, you'll start to figure out like, oh, this is really happening because yeah. it needs to change your mindset. Because <clears throat> sometimes we'll run off. No, no disrespect, but sometimes we'll chase something that's I call it a rich boycott. If it's a, a, a clothing line mm-hmm. and we're like oh don't wear it and it's like you know i, I remember when it was the the gucci, gucci. thing and, and my boyfriend terrell always keeps him in perspective he said, man, man man what y'all doing now dog what's the revolution now mm-hmm. gucci i said well he said dog we don't buy gucci we ain't got no money like that right he said if it was tj maxx target ross True. yeah but he said y'all get so gone with something that has nothing to do with what we really going through so I said, wow, he makes a lot of sense. This, you can be hands-on. You can you can research eji.org. Mm-hmm. And we and we and we hopefully we'll start taking people down to uh to the museum that's in, in to the Legacy Museum the down Legacy, in yeah. Alabama and the uh the Lynching Memorial. Oh I mean my Brian, God. Brian you guys gotta go he see. He opened it. them. I gotta right? take my key. Brian, yes. opened? Brian opened it down. I gotta take my key. It's it's a bro. must. It's a must because Brian's philosophy is once we take ownership of our dark past. You know, I think yeah, other places, like you go to Berlin, you go to Germany, you know, they, they you know, it's illegal to have a swastika. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, there's, there, you can't go a couple blocks without seeing uh, memorials around Jewish homes where they were taken from their, you know, their homes during during the, gen- the genocide there. So it's, 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 it, we um, as Americans haven't accepted our dark past. You know, you go down in the South and it's littered with co- Confederate flags mm-hmm. all over the place. You know, it, 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 it's so, so Brian's philosophy behind it is that if we, uh, if these townships in, 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 in the South that take um, ownership of these memorials, other lynchings that happen in their townships, that people, we have, we have a sense of healing. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there has been no real closure healing for us here because um, we're still living in a state of it's, it's terrorism here mm-hmm. for us. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like slavery didn't end, it just evolved. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, Very and, much so. And, and, Very uh, much And so. I feel like once we take ownership of our past, we'll be able to start to take the steps towards some type of healing. Sometimes, mm-hmm. hey, man, I messed up. Okay, we, we, we fucked up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Cool. All right, cool. Let's, how do we work to make this better? You know, how do, how do, how do we take steps um, after knowing that we made a mistake, but but if you keep denying it, like nothing really happened, how, how do we ever get any closure? And with both of you gentlemen being the faces you you know, the names you know, mm-hmm. you know, we know Jamie Foxx, we know Michael B. Jordan, like, and and we will give it up to you guys. How much do you give it up to Brian Stevenson? Oh, every day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, it's much beyond a movie for me. Uh, I'm so glad and honored that I got a chance to meet him and get to know him because he changed me as a man. Like I grew a lot over these past, you know, four or five years, really understanding him and what he goes through and what he and, and the fight he's actually fighting is for us. Mm-hmm. You know, so so after I, you can't. It's unsee. crazy how someone would do something that you wouldn't do. No, it's, you it's, know, it's, it's like what, man, that's a lot. You know, what I'm saying? his, his life. life. I mean, yes. he's doing this stuff pro bono. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what type of dedication, self-sacrifice is that? You know, so when to he go made, to Harvard, he could have had a blank mm-hmm. check. He went yeah. wherever he wanted to go. Yeah. But he yeah. went to the hardest place. He went to the one place where not one person has ever been exonerated. And changed a, lot of, lives, and changed a lot of lives, bro. Changed, changed a lot of lives. Mm-hmm. And with, with being connected to the movie for about the last four years, yep. you never had a chance to meet. Walter had already passed, huh? Walter had already passed wow. away by that time, so I didn't get a chance yeah. to meet him. Um, where do you channel that energy from, Jamie? Well, being honest, I'm leaning... <clears throat> Leaning on my on on, on our and our on our leader right here, and the fact that uh, Walter and I actually aesthetically look the same. Right. We have the same cheekbones, the same diamond head, the same uh, uh, box cut that that he had, and, and so it was that. And then meeting with Brian Stevenson and saying that the one thing Walter McMillan had, which I've visited Death Row before, it's it's the most eerie place in the world. And the worst thing you can give a death row inmate is hope. Mm. And, oh yeah. And he said because they don't want to, they don't want to think that there's a possibility that they can get out. So they just want to, you know, they want is accept. They want to mm-hmm. accept it. They almost want it to come. 
but with Walter, since he didn't really understand what was going on in his life, and he, this is a sad, it's an interest, interesting thing. <clears throat> He's in jail, death row, but he decides to give people hope. He decides to, to stay gregarious and things like that and, and talk to people, talking to, to Herbert and things like that, um, which is weird because it's like, wow, this here's a man who's not tearing down the jail cell saying that I'm innocent every single day. It's almost like, in a sense, we accept it. Like sometimes we just, maybe this is the way we supposed to mm -hmm. be. So there was a sort of a sad earnestness to that. And so just listening to Brian, working out the, the dialect, talking back and forth to Michael on how thick the dialect should be and things like that. And then we, I think we found a, um, I think we found a, an incredible balance for this character where you could see uh, the humanity of, of, of him. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a choice, you know, honestly, with Destin, you know, Gil Netter, Asher, the other producers of this movie, we did it all, we made a choice in the beginning of the movie, what movie we were making, and everybody was on board. Everybody was on the same page. This wasn't a, uh, you know, cross-examination, badgering the witness, you know, courtroom antics and nothing like that. You know, we wanted to stay really true to what Brian's life was and his tactics and his, and his strategy. Like, every, Brian is extremely thought out. He's extremely reserved. He uh Man. he doesn't he doesn't get too emotionally high. And I noticed or low. that when he when he was be done, I'm like, wait, you done? <laughs> because you would think because us if we were in those situations we would be angry we would yeah. be emotional we would be we were in there yelling and screaming and, and, and one more thing and, and one more thing exactly yeah. but but knowing where he was and situational awareness and understanding that if he gets emotional if he says anything too loud talks a certain type of way he can't get anything done right so you know that strip search scene, scene was so important <sighs> because you know he knew it was illegal you know but he put his pride he put his ego to the side because if i don't come here i get a chance to go home I can put my clothes on, open this door, and get out of here. My my clients don't have that privilege. So I'm doing my clients a disservice if I don't go through this temporary moment of uh, of uncomfortableness just to be able to get there so I can better serve you. So that's the kind of person Brian was. That's the type of movie that we want to really portray. And y'all did it. Thank Great you. And, um, did it, and we didn't want to emotionally manipulate anybody. You know, you mm -hmm. sometimes you watch these movies and you feel like you're being told how to feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, and oh, they're using this to make me feel a certain type of way. Right. And no, we just wanted to lay out and what you know it was, what? man. I didn't come out angry. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I, awesome. Of course it was emotional. Yeah. You came out, you learned, you were like, yeah. damn, but but not where you wanted to get in your car and you was like, oh, Bobby. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it was done so well. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and it was... Because, because it didn't... And this is what I appreciate about the movie. <clears throat> when you're doing a movie about black culture, sometimes we can go off the black cliff. We can go say, oh, we'll do this right. and, and only we get it. What I thought was great about what Michael consistently and the director consistently said, let's leave it open this way. Right. So when you see the white characters in the movie, like the correctional the guard. officer, the, the guard. guard, the contrition on his face yeah, when he knew things man. are wrong, it allows a person who's white in the audience to say, yeah, that's me. Yeah. And then when you look at the prosecuting attorney, who was an incredible actor, but you see the contrition in his face and white people say, yeah, that's me. And the prosecuting attorney, man, I, I, the way you picked him, with, this dude, Ray, he's a, this dude, I didn't want to meet him until the scene. I go in and that was the first time I saw him. He said, like, Mr. Myers, is it true that uh, when you gave your testimony that you did it for a lighter sentence and they said, cut. How was that? Do you think that was, a, should, should we do one more? <laughs> the dude is English. <laughs> <laughs> and he pulled me out of my character. I was like, what the Whoa. fuck? Yes. And he looked at me and says, God, you did not. Yes. <laughs> it's weird. Blow this me well, out. Like. Yeah, I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> and then he goes, then I said, this motherfucker's so cold. And then, I don't know if you peeped this, but he would sing Prince lyrics. Yeah, yeah Prince. What? Before he, he said, give me one moment, please. One moment, please. And Francis Green Man died of a big disease with a little name. Sign of the times. Sign of the time. And action. Mr. Myers. What? I was like, <laughs> yeah. Boy, I was like, it's tough. my ritual. That's how you yeah. knew. Wow. That's how you knew process. that the movie was on a different level, but it opened it up to everybody. And that's why it's so special. And that's why I think it's not only... Not only will you be entertained by the movie, but it's a, a little bit of a responsibility because what I will say, especially when it, when in, in our culture, is like these people like the Toronto Film Festival have wrapped their arms around it. These people in the Palm Springs have wrapped their arms yeah, around it. Yeah, congratulations on that Spotlight Award. Yeah, yeah. So, so people are, are wrapping that, and I share that with him. Anything we get, we share. That's beautiful. But, but 
people outside of us are wrapping our arms around us. So we we got to make sure we wrap our arms around this in, in the in the biggest way. Mm-hmm. In, in so the well done, man. How long were y'all on set together? Uh, about a month. All right, so a month, a month, a lot of month. time together. A lot of time together. All righty. Where are you going with this? I just want to <laughs> I, I, I just want to ask. Like, Don't be scared. I'm, I'm going to get into some things you should know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just some things you should know about Jamie Foxx. Okay, tell me. And tell Jamie Foxx, some things you should know he about Michael B. Okay, I like this. All righty. All righty uh, now. I'll keep score. Michael B. Jordan. Mm-hmm. All righty. We'll, we'll go with Jamie Foxx okay. first. Okay. Uh, this, now, you know what? Let's go with Michael. Michael. Okay, let's do this. What is Jamie Foxx's real name? Oh, jeez. He ain't going that. He should. Damn, okay. Well, well, shit, do, do I know you? <laughs> <laughs> do I know you? Right. I mean... What's his J- real name? Javante? Javante! Oh, wow. Nah, what, what is it? Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, what is it? All right. <laughs> is it, uh, wait, which one are you guys going to say? Wait, Eric Marlon Bishop. Yeah. Eric Marlon Bishop. Eric Marlon. Why you? Why you? Yeah. you, you look at when you, you say that, even look at my government name. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Here, that's me. Here. Okay, yeah, Jamie right? Fox. Things okay. you should know. Yes. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. What does the B in Michael B. Jordan stands for? Uh, Branford. <laughs> <laughs> you said that with conviction, huh? Branford. Uh, okay, Branford. so Michael Branford. Branford. Oh. Michael Beasley. 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 Mike, no, Michael. I should know this. Jesus. Michael. Beyonce. Like no, no. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. I think so. Michael. Michael Beyonce. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Michael Bradford Jordan. Mm. Man. Oh, wow. You got it. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah, you got it wrong, man. Is it, how do you pronounce it? Is it Bakari? Bakari. Bakari. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, like you know, I, just, I don't drink. <laughs> you know, so you know I, what I, I don't drink, so I don't drink Bakari. But it's not Bakari. Mm. Uh, Bakari Michael B. Jordan. Uh-huh. What year did Jamie Foxx join the cast of In Living Color? Ooh, 1991, 1993, or 1995? I'm going to say 93. He said 93. Damn! Nope. Yeah, what year was it, Jamie? I don't know. 1991. It was 91. Oh, good. I was on. I, I should have more money by now. I don't know. I started that early. I All call right now. Account. To uh, Michael B. Jordan. Yes. Michael B. Jordan. Who was Jamie Foxx's co-star in the movie Collateral? Oh Lord. Tom Cruise. He yeah. said Tom Cruise. Yeah. Go ahead now. Wow. Yeah, wow. Give me yeah, what's up? Go. Like, give me one, one of them easy. Give me one of them easy. Uh, Jamie Foxx. Yes. What was Michael B. Jordan's character's name in Black Panther? Eric Killmonger, Erickson Killmonger, <laughs> Eric Killamon, or Richie Killmon? <laughs> Eric Killmonger. Killamon. Go there ahead. You go, now. Killamon. Somebody see the tip of the wide come down to that. Okay, <laughs> Michael B. Jordan. What song, popular song, did Jamie Foxx do with Kanye West? Mm. Oh, go there. Go ahead now. See how I'm making mm-hmm. it a little easier yeah, for you guys? Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, with these. Jamie Foxx. Yes, indeed. When is your co star of the great movie Just Mercy? Y'all were together <laughs> at least 30 days. Yes. Long hours. Yes. When is Michael B. Jordan's birthday? Uh, He's an Aquarius. Mm-hmm. I know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he loves signs. He's an Aquarius. <laughs> right. So that lands him in what month? February. Uh huh. Because he's a February Aquarius. My daughter is February 15th. She's a big fan of his mm-hmm. and knows. So, ninth. He said February, February 9th. 9th. He saw the paper over here. Uh, yes, no, it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, he saw it. He wasn't no, looking. No, 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 no. He wasn't she, know, <laughs> she knows that because I'm, I know everybody signed that I work with. So, whenever I'm working with somebody, I say, okay. Is he in it? Okay, he's an Aquarius. You're into Zodiac February. signs? Did, yeah, no, I know. Jamie and I had a really one. deep conversation yeah. about signs. Signs, yeah. <laughs> so that was the easy. Michael I mean, B. I know Jordan, that, things you should that's, know. Wait a minute, wait. Okay. Give me my props on that. Right. No, February 9th. You got it, you got like, it. Like, you got pinpointed. It. I went like my Now daughter. you got to get him something, though. You know, I'm smooth for getting <laughs> people birthday. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, did that pass? Yeah. Hopefully he getting all the gifts on February 9th. What part of Texas is Jamie Foxx from? Michael B. Jordan. Turl. There you go. Turl, Texas. Go ahead now. Let's close it up. Uh, Michael B. Jordan's first like acting gig Lord. was on what popular television show? Do I get multiple choice here? Was yeah. it Oh, oh yeah, give The me Wire, one. Sopranos, or Give Me a Break? That's actually a great 
multiple choice options. Mm-hmm. Give me a break. <laughs> a young <laughs> Michael B. Jordan. A young Michael B. Jordan. Was, first me, acting wait break. Minute, when was first give me a acting, break? First <laughs> acting. The Wire, Sopranos. Or give me a break. I'd have to say give me a break. I'm just taking a shot. Man, you got that one wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's too wrong, though. Yeah, yeah, it's well, the wire. That wasn't like, even like, born. No, 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 it's not. Actually, it's not. But it's not. It's not. It's but you took me off. You said, you said give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> and the motherfucker made me nervous. No, no. It was a Sopranos. Soprano. Thank you, gentlemen, Thank for coming you. into yeah. the Thanks neighborhood, man. Us, man. Good time. It, it was a pleasure. It was Same a pleasure, man. And and we seen each other, Michael B. Jordan. You said we were going to do this. Yes, sir. We did it. Jamie Foxx, damn it, you are, you're here all the time to the point where <laughs> we don't want you in here anymore. No, but no, continue to make us look good. Continue to make us proud. Continue to even challenge us. You know what I'm saying? And then we're going into, we had 2020, man, and we got to continue to challenge ourselves. Continue to think outside the box. Continue to push not just our culture forward, but continue to push us forward man you and too, y'all man. did a great job nah, same bro. way you, you, you're giving us a voice man we listen man. to you in the morning all the time like, all day man you just keep doing what you're doing everything you guys got going up here is like super special and i'm not man. begging to be in a movie with you guys you know <laughs> nah, I'm fist bump you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, we're working on it fist bump. Fist you know what i'm saying yeah. and talk to them about yeah. that black panther too as well okay yeah. i got you i would love to just be <laughs> because they had every black in there except me and michael blackson you know what i'm saying why was it Michael Blackson and Beach Niggas? I, I don't know. Beach Niggas. <laughs> Beach niggas. But, uh, fuck. But, but no, man. Me. And continue to come back. Continue to hang out. Continue to check in with us in the neighborhood, man. And once again, man, I encourage everyone to go see this movie, mm-hmm. Just Mercy. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Trust me, man. And, and when we say go see it, take your friends, take your family, theater buyouts, that's how important this movie is, man. And I thank you guys for coming into the neighborhood and hanging out with us. Thanks, man. Thanks. Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx in the neighborhood, Big Boy Big Neighborhood. Boy. That was a great interview.